Hello and welcome to That's the Point where we talk about construction technology and everything that goes into precision measuring. My name is Corey Meyer. Sitting next to me is Jeremy Horn. What's up, man? How's it going? Good. How you doing? I'm, I'm here. We're ready to get after it. So today we decided that it's time to jump into the, one of those deep dive topics. Um, we want to do these That's the Points based on actual questions and actual things that happen out in the field. And this is far and away the most common question we get, which is, all right, so now these new TFLX files, what are they, how do they work? And so we decided to just do a quick video on it and kind of talk about, first of all, exactly that, just what is the difference between a TFL, the old way, and a TFLX file, which is the new way? How do we create them and then how do we convert them? So brought in Jeremy, he's done this presentation um, way too many times that he doesn't want to count or think about. Um, so we figured we'd just let you do it one more time and then that'll be it for the rest of your life. So um, do a I video. Doubt that. I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> so one more video and he's done. To reset, what we have is when Trimble came out with version with FieldLink version 6.3, there was actually this idea that they were going to change their, their project type, right, or their project file folder. Um, and so that's where the TFLX came from. Prior to that, we had a job file um, that was a TFL file, and that was the old way of doing things. So let's kind of start there, talk about the differences, and then we'll build some. Yeah. So. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, touching back on the old way a little bit, because this was always something in trainings that we would do, people would get a little bit hung up on um, because we're dealing with drawings and point files and these different things, and they seem to all be together, but they're really not. So, uh, you know, our TFL file is, was our job file. So that's what, when we go into FieldLink, we're creating our job file, which is actually a TFL file. And really, that's just a space to hold our points, um, also known as the points file, which is also how it's going to be referred to going forward. Um, so with the TFL file, we would create it, any points we created, layout, collecting, or importing in would live in our TFL file. We also had the ability to bring in drawings, models, um, PDFs. Those things also lived in our TFL file, but more as a background as we used to call it, right? So um, it, it's not really part of the file. People would always ask all the time, you know, can I export the drawing out with points on it? No, you can't because we're not actually altering the drawing or the model. That's just living in our field link. Intentionally. Editing. Correct. Right. We're That's, keeping that drawing just the way it is. Absolutely. So those kind of things hasn't really changed um, the way they work together. Um, it, it, we've just kind of added another element, right? And it's the project folder that you mentioned earlier. Um, so with the new way, now instead of creating a job folder, which is our TFL or points file, we're going to create a project folder. Um, and any of our, our customers who have already been using Connect at all, you know, this is going to look very familiar. So you're creating now a project folder, and then within that, we're going to create our TFLX files or points files. So those TFLX files are still, in essence, the, you know, very similar to our TFL file as far as what they do holding our points. Um, but now they're going to live in our project folder instead of them being the actual job folder, right? And then we are still going to bring our drawings in. Um, our models, our PDFs, whatever we're using to work within our points, we're still going to bring those into our project folder as well. So why, so why, I get the idea of having a project folder now, and that does make more sense. Why did they go to this new format at this point? Is it more extensible? Do you have more flexibility in this new format as far as multiple point files and stuff? Yeah, oh, yeah. I think there's a couple different reasons, and I, I think I touched on one of them with the Connect. Yep. You know, the Trimble has is, is been very deliberate on uh, improving the communication from the field uh, to the office and vice versa, and Trimble Connect, you know, is a big part of that. So with this now, you know, you have your project folder. Um, it's going to look the same in Connect. So if someone is dumping something into the project folder in Connect, these guys in the field are going to see it the same way. Okay. So now also uh, the other part you just touched on is you also have your TFLX files in there, whereas before what would end up happening in a lot of cases is we would have one TFL file, um, we would create that file for a project, and then guys would just start working. And the next thing you know, you've got thousands of points in there stacked on top of points. The software wants to run slow. Um, in other cases, you know, uh, some of our clients would, you know, be a little bit more organized with it and, and create different TFL files, right? But now you've got X job, you know, floor one, X job, floor two, and you've got all these TFL files all separate out in this space. Right. And, you, you know, you've got to switch in between them. Um, now it's a lot easier to manage that where we have our project folder and then... You know, uh, whether it's in the office or, you know, in the field, you can see all your different TFLX files, your different points files, as well as all your models. It can be two models. It can be 20 models. 
And you can easily just toggle between those. And I think one of the other exciting advancements is, is that it's no longer, because in the past with the TFL job folder, we would have TRB files that were created in the background. Yeah. Um, but now it's actually the native file. So if you bring in a DWG, you can still go find a DWG. There's no conversion occurring there. That's correct. Let's talk about how we actually create a file from scratch. And, that, and then I'll highlight some of the differences and some of the different processes that we have in creating the files when 6.3 and beyond in FieldLink. Yeah, yep, absolutely. So yeah, if you see here on my screen here, if we go up to more, um, what we're used to seeing in that second option there under map used to be jobs, right? So now we see projects. There's a telltale sign. You're yep. running 6.3 or newer. When I click on that projects, I'm still gonna go to manage, which was the same as before. And this is where before I would create my job file, which was actually my TFL file, right? The difference here is I'm creating my project and I'm not actually creating my TFLX file yet. I'm just creating my overall project folder. Nothing is in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit create here. Uh, we're just gonna call this one TTP for that's the point. And then you'll see it'll bring us to a, a, a second screen that we have not seen before. And it's also gonna prompt us to create a points file to continue. That's referring to this TFLX that we keep talking about. That's our points file. Um, so now we're gonna create, which we have to do before we can even do anything else because the software needs to know where it's gonna place these points we're bringing in, you know, whatever layout we're doing. It doesn't, all it is is an empty, empty project right now, right? So I'm gonna go up here uh, to these, the add button and I can go ahead and, and create the name of, of this uh, particular TFLX that I want to start working with. So in this case, I, I have some data here from our from our BPLF, BPFL uh, office. So training room just happens to be one of the ones that have a data in. So I'm going to go ahead and hit create for training room. So now you'll see here I have a uh, points files training room. I can add more as we talked about. So I'm going to go ahead and actually create another one as well. We're going to call this one shop. So now we've got two TFLX files or points files, to be simple, uh, training room and shop. So now I can go ahead and open up and get to work. Um, so now it's open. It is blank though, because we haven't brought anything in. That looks like all my layout files. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we still have to go through our normal processes that we're used to. So, but now we've created our, our, our two files we want to work with. And then from there, I'm going to kind of go through with the process I'm used to, right? I'm going to go to projects and then import. From import, I can go locally, I can tap onto my USB, which I have here, uh, where I have, <clears throat> excuse me, our office drawing. So I'm gonna import that first. I'll just pop back to the map so you can kind of take a look at that. So now you'll see here this lovely drawing of our, our uh, home office here. Home sweet home. And so now I need some points to work with. So uh, I know a lot of our clients are given points that are created in the office by someone. Um, and then they bring those in as, as CSV files or, or some version of that. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through that here. So if I go back here, you'll see I have a, my two CSV files, shop and training. Um, but like we talked about, we're working in two, we can work in two different points files now, two different field link TFLX files. So before we do this import, we do want to make sure, I'm going to go back to the map here and make sure I have the correct TFLX highlighted before I do my import. So whichever one's active, that's where the points are going to get dropped in. That's correct. Okay. And this is how I'm going to filter my area. So I have shop here highlighted. So I'm going to go back up here to my projects and import. And I'm going to take my CSV that's related to my shop points. Go ahead and import those. And then I now if I go back to my map, you'll see there are my points that are in our shop out here. Uh, so we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to now I'm going to go over here because this is where I can also toggle between my two files. So I'm going to switch over to my training file, and you'll see there the, those points go away because I haven't brought any points in here yet. Makes right? sense. So both of these points are working with our one model, and I could have multiple, but in this case I just have one drawing in here. Uh, but they're going to work with the, whatever points that I bring in, and that's how I can have an advantage here to be able to filter to filter through what I want to have at different parts of my project. So now if I go to projects and import again, now this time I'll go ahead and bring in the uh, training points. And we go back to map, and now you'll see on the map here's the points that came in into our training room. So again, back over to our little icon to the left, points, I wanna switch, if you'll see now if I toggle back between shop and training, there's my shop, there's my training. So, you know, 
very valuable in, in helping us. Uh, like I said, I can't tell you how many times I'm on the project and, and I'm helping guys. They call me out and and we're on a deck and they start zooming in and moving, zooming and zooming because literally this, you can't even see their drawing file as you see now because it's just, it's, it's just a spider web of points, black points everywhere. So this can kind of help that to where we can still easily toggle back and forth, switch back and forth without slowing our tablet down and, and helping us visually as well. And you can also, and again, you can stack multiple drawing files, multiple geometry files, anything you want in there. This is, this is really a much more effective container method of keeping all those files separated, uh, but also giving you the visibility to see them. And with the models, you can turn more than one layer on at a time. It's not a toggle like the rest. So if you were to load multiple ones in there, you could load as many, you could turn on several at the same time, yep. and it would continue to redraw it. Absolutely. So in some of the other later versions of FieldLink, we, you know, uh, with the advanced versions, we were able to bring in multiple drawings and they would stack. We still have that ability here. Um, and we can, but it's much easier to just see in this list here, turn them on and off. Um, you don't and even have to have his coordinates. Yeah, if the coordinates are in the right, <laughs> if they're on the right coordinates or matching coordinates, Never I been an say. issue ever. I don't even know what he's talking yeah. about. So we just built a file completely from scratch, brought it in, that's the brand new format. So let's talk about, you're coming from 6.2 or previous, you need to convert a, pro, a project into TFLX. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the easy, pro, easy steps to do that. Very simple, it's pretty much a button push. Um, so any of your TFL projects that you already have loaded on your tablet, uh, when you go to projects and go to convert, um, it's automatically going to pull in that folder and filter through and show you TFL projects that are there. So because the conversion is only for TFL files, it's correct. not it's not converting anything else. It's strictly looking for an old TFL. Correct. Okay. So like we talked about, the TFL file is really our uh, TFL file is really our points file our drawings would just live in the background. So really what we're doing when we're doing this conversion is we're taking our old TFL points file in the format that Trimble used to use, and we're just turning it into TFLX so it can now speak and work in, in you know, uh, under, the new, under the new software. So when I click on TFL, like I said, it's gonna filter automatically. So in this case, it's just showing one because I only have one in this particular job folder. And I'm gonna hit convert. Um, so once it converts, You'll see it now took those points. I don't have a lot of points in this one. But now if I go over to my tree over here under the points, there's my new TFLX file, Trimble Headquarters, uh, and it's created a project. Now, I still will need to go up here to projects and import and bring in my actual drawing, um, which is also should still be on your tablet if it's one you've been working in. Um, so now, now you'll see I had those points I brought in, but now I also brought in my drawing. So... If I go over to my tree now, you'll see there's our points, there's my new TFLX that was created, and then now here's my model that also came in. And I'm, I'm now, within a couple clicks in 30 seconds, I am now have my old file in the new version, there's my TFLX, there's my models, and I'm ready to go to work. That's, that's not hateful. Not too I've seen worse conversions in the world. So. Yeah. All right, well, that's it. So by understanding uh, these enhancements, you can easily manage your projects using TFLX files. Uh, rather than the legacy TFL job files. So we warned everyone this was going to be a deep dive, and, but we just wanted to, again, it was an often requested uh, discussion that people want to have about the differences between these two formats, so we just want to bring Jeremy in. But thanks, you, you explained it. It's like yeah. you've done this before once yeah. or twice. I'm sure I'll be doing it again. <laughs> so, no, we're going to be positive about this. No chance, like you're done. Um, but remember, don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you don't miss all of our latest episodes that dive into the latest tips, tricks, and pointers to get the most out of your Trimble gear. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on That's The Point.